In this presentation, we will discuss measurement period and contingent considerations within an acquisition process. Get ready to account with Advanced Financial Accounting. At this point, with the discussion of the acquisition process, you're probably thinking, okay, I kind of see how this fits together. I see how this works, but logistically, it could still be a little bit tough if you were to apply this in practice. You're probably saying, hey, there could be some problems in practice if we were to apply this out. For example, if we're saying, okay, we're going to revalue the assets and the liabilities, and we're going to value the consideration, we're going to make a comparison of the value of the assets and liabilities to the consideration that's being given for the company that in essence is being acquired in the acquisition process, well then what about that valuation process? That's gonna be difficult because how do we revalue the assets and liabilities? Because uh, normally when you value something, you value it from a market perspective, which means there's actually a transaction, a sale that's taking place. So note obviously that valuation process is gonna be somewhat of a tedious process for us to go through and revalue. And how long do we have for that to take? I mean, if we're, this isn't happening basically instantly in, with regards to this process, this is going to be taking some time. So how much time, you know, is it going to take to revalue all that stuff? And, and then basically, what, what do you do in terms of, of that, that time period? How much time do you have in order to do that? We have the measurement period. Period of time to ascertain fair values can be found in ASC 805. Uh, ends when the acquirer obtains the necessary information about the facts as of the acquisition date. So we have the date. We're going to set the da date of the acquisition date. And then we've got the measurement period, which is going to be the period of time it takes for us to basically get the information we need. And you can imagine with different types of assets, it would take different things to value them. Of course, cash is pretty easy. Cash is cash. However, you know, different types of property, plants and equipment, buildings and whatnot, those things are more difficult to value, may need appraisals and whatnot. Uh, in, in those types of situations and then limit to not exceed one year so not exceeding one year now the next kind of messy topic we have is the contingent consideration so if you think about this process one company purchasing another if they if the purchase was straight for cash like that's the first way we want to think about it pretty pretty straightforward if there was stock exchanged in it and whatnot still not too bad we could still figure that out and, and uh, what if there's other types of assets and liabilities that, that are involved we can figure that out but then what if there's a contingent consideration that's been that's given as part of the consideration in essence in other words as part of the purchase process and part of the acquisition uh process well that gets messier as well that that makes <laughs> that adds a bit of a mess to the process as well so uh contingent consideration consideration exchange and contingent on future events so the the consideration that's being given then is going to be contingent in some future event which of course is an unknown we don't know you know we don't know the future event so contingent consideration to be valued at fair value as of the acquisition date and classified as a liability or equity so we need to value it so the contingent so the contingent consideration to be valued at the fair value uh, as of the acquisition date and classified as a liability or equity at that time and you can see this in ASC 805, and you can see this is somewhat consistent to contingencies, dealing with contingencies uh, in general. Uh, so we have to say, you know, normal kind of contingencies type of accounting. Uh, if, if there's something like a, a lawsuit that's going to happen, we got to say, we got to figure out, well, is it very likely to happen or somewhat likely to happen? Do we know what the value, uh, the valuation of this thing will be if there's a, a lawsuit in the future, which is contingent on a future event, whether or not we win or or lose the lawsuit where you can you can you know kind of compare and contrast that if you have that uh type of accounting process in your mind so acquirer needs to recognize every contingency that comes up from contractual rights or obligations and other contingencies if it is more likely than not that they meet the def the definition of an asset liability at the acquisition date per asc 805. Now, another kind of messy component when you're thinking about an acquisition is what about uh, in-process research and development? So you're acquiring a company, they have research and development that's in process. Uh, you, you know, they haven't quite, they haven't possibly, we don't know exactly the application or what's been made or whatnot, but it's an in-process research and development. What do we do with that? Ongoing research and development projects of an inquiry are assets. So we need to value those as assets in some way. Uh, they will be recorded at their acquisition date uh, they will be recorded at their acquisition date fair values. So once again, we got to figure out what the fair value of that is. Not the easiest uh, thing in the world, but we have to do our best to, to value that uh, those items as well. 
the projects will be classified as having indefinite lives, uh, so will not be amortized until completed or abandoned. So you might think, okay, if we have this research and uh, development, we figure out, okay, it's in process that we're, we're purchasing. That's part of our what we're purchasing here. We need to value that in some way because we're paying for that. That's part of what we're paying for. So we're, we're going to value it. We're going to put it on the books, you would think, as an asset then, right? It's going to go on the books as an asset. Is it going to be something that we're going to depreciate or amortize in some way, like you would for property, plants, and equipment, for example, or some intangible type of assets? Uh, and they're saying, no, in this case, the project's will be classified as having indefinite lives. So we're going to put it on the books, indefinite life. We're not just going to apply the cost that we allocate to these items and just and just uh, expense that in accordance with like a straight line depreciation. We're going to say indefinite life, so will not be amortized until completed or abandoned. So either the project is completed, at which time we'll know what the value of something is, the, the research and develop, development that's been you know completed or whatnot, or abandoned at which time we say okay it was a useless thing and at that point in time then uh we'll record that the fact that it has been then abandoned 